This is Basil the Orphan Biker. Today we're going to talk about why I got a Sportster. So, a question I get by some actually by a lot of people is why did you get a sportster man there's a lot of other bikes you could have gotten and these questions usually get asked by well let's start, let's break them down into categories we have the harley aficionados who for whatever reason view the sportster as a girl's bike even though i find it to be a much better bike than a lot of the harley bikes that are out there currently because it's the last original harley but that's a discussion for another time other people that ask me the question are fast boys who just love sports bikes. It's like, man, why would you get a cruiser when you can go fast? And there are those who hate Harleys and think that you're paying way too much for what you get on the bike. And they just can't understand why you would buy a Sportster or even a Harley when you can get an Indian or a Japanese bike that has a more quality build or more reliable better parts. Harleys are practically made overseas. They're all made in Japan, just assembled in the US. What's the difference between that and the Japanese bike? You know, I, I, I've heard all the excuses. So I figured I'd cover today and probably, well, I think this is my first actual motor vlog. I thought I'd cover the reasons why I got a Sportster. Now, for me, I wanted a bike that I could work on by myself. And looking at the Sportster, the Evo engine, the fact that it's been made for so long. I, I suppose the main reason, one of the main reasons I got the Sportster was ease of maintenance, ease of working on the bike. I mean, I looked at this bike compared to an uh, Indian, I couldn't even figure out where to begin working on the engine of an Indian. It's so tightly sealed within the frame of the bike, I couldn't figure out how you can get to it. I looked at an Evo engine inside a Sportster frame and after the tank lift, it's, man, it's super easy to work on. So ease of maintenance, the Evo engines are also, I mean, for lack of a better description, bulletproof. This engine's been around for decades and Harley's had more than enough time to work out the flaws and issues that have, may have popped up in the Evo engine over time. And now that it's fuel injected, yes, it's still an air-cooled engine, but it doesn't have the airflow issues some of the other Harley motorcycles have had, especially with the tank lift. It's got full airflow around the engine. Now, yes, the insides of my thighs are baking right now. It's 105 degrees out, so that's not contributing. That's not helping matters any. But it still runs beautifully, and it's well. when you well-tune the bike, it does what it's supposed to do. So, ease of maintenance, reliability of the engine. Another main reason is the parts aftermarket. And I heard it said, and I can now confirm through experience and my own digging around and modification of this motorcycle, that you can practically build a Sportster out of nothing but aftermarket parts and never have a Harley part see this bike. Oh my goodness, the degree, the number and variety of aftermarket parts for this bike is just mind-blowing. And that has made it so much easier to turn this bike truly something of my own desire and creation. I have really made this bike my own. It rides so much better than it did the day I bought it. It fits my personality. I mean, this, at least I think it does. This right here is a bike I've always dreamed of riding as far as aesthetics, performance. I know someone laughed at me at the performance aspect. It's not a performance bike, but it performs like I want it to, and that's all that matters. I think another motivating factor for the area I live in is the dealer network. Now, my first bike was a Honda. There are gold wings everywhere here. And there are Honda dealerships practically in every 
larger city in this area. I have to drive almost an hour to get to the closest Honda dealership. But Hondas and Harleys are the only real support network in this area. And I didn't really like the Honda Cruisers. I mean, yes, I started on Rebel. But I, I didn't, I wanted to upgrade and I didn't like the, the ergonomics of the Rebel 1100. Some do, I just, I didn't. Why are you going so slow? Speed limit 55, go. But there's like a Harley dealer in every city, probably more Harley dealers than Honda dealers. And I can go to Springfield, West Plains. I can, I mean, everywhere you go around here, it seems like you throw a rock and you're hitting a Harley dealership. Most people here ride Harleys. That's just the way it is. So practicality was part of the reason. Pragmatism, I'm a very pragmatic person. And it just made sense to buy a Harley. But also, Harleys had that heritage aspect. And you know what? I find it funny that I actually did buy a Harley. For the longest time, I swore I would never buy a Harley. Personally, I feel that most Harleys are overpriced, underperforming, and what you get for the money, it's, it's kind of dismal. But Harley is making efforts in the last couple years to try and change that image. Their bikes are now liquid cool, they're better performing, I still think they're overpriced, but it's a step in the right direction. Would I buy a Nightster? Probably not. Now, if they were cheaper, would I buy a Lowrider ST? Probably. If I had $21,000 to spend, I probably would buy a Lowrider ST in a heartbeat. It's a beautiful bike. I sat on one. It's a bagger. It's a kind of a performance bagger if such a thing exists. But it's a nice looking bike. It's not that big. It performs well. It's just way too much money. I can get I can get two used sportsters for the price of one new lowrider ST. And I'm a cost conscious person and I just can't justify that kind of cost. But another reason why I got the Sportster over any other Harley besides the cost is I like light, nimble bikes. Now, my first bike was a Honda Rebel 300. Why did you get the 500? I couldn't afford it at the time. And that's kind of the same boat I run into here. I'm not rich. I don't make a ton of money. So I, got, I get what I can afford. But the Sportster, I mean, just besides the price, is a light, fun, nimble bike. I say light, it weighs 560 pounds, but when you compare it to the other Harleys out there, it's a much lighter bike. It's more nimble on its, on its two wheels, and I enjoy the crap out of it. I'm not, I just do. Now the Sportster stepping up from the 300 wasn't really a big deal because it's much of the same aesthetic. It has much of the same handling characteristics. Now granted, the Honda didn't vibrate nearly as much, so in some aspects it was more comfortable but it didn't have the oomph that the Sportster does and that's that's all I wanted something that went faster a little more torque a little more powerful could handle a longer ride better I took that one on a 800 mile road trip this one on a thousand mile road trip and other than some parts uh, vibrating loose or a bolt snapping in half from vibrations over the thousand mile trip the Sportster handled it better and it was more comfortable. Not much more comfortable, but it was more comfortable. Let me check my... Oh, I should probably get some gas. I didn't realize I'm almost at 100 miles on this tank. Change lanes. I guess I'm doing a gas stop. At least I looked. One thing the Honda Rebel had the Sportster didn't have was a gas light, or gas gauge rather. Oh hey, I got half a tank, I should pull over. Oh.
Well, I'm glad to see that gas is starting to inch towards the under $5 a gallon mark. Let's see, let's get this. Don't have a gas gauge, so I'm using my trip gauge. That's my gas gauge. Man, it's crazy out today. This gas station is packed. Ambulances and cop cars everywhere. Oh, what's going on? And let's go. So yeah, there's no one single reason as to why I got a Sportster. It's just a lot of little details and me being obsessive about details, I did a lot of reading, research, watching videos, and there were a number of bikes on my short list. The uh, Sportster was one of them. The SV650 was another. Uh, I forget what the third bike was, but the SV650 is still really high on my list, and I might actually consider that for my second bike. I mean, I was... Uh, prospecting for a motorcycle ministry who rides with one percenters and other gentlemen wearing diamond patches on their cut and I didn't think starting out there the SV650 would fit in very well with the crowd I was riding with and turns out I was right even though I and my particular group had no requirement or mandate to ride uh, American made or even Harley Davidson's I felt just for the time being I, I needed something that would fit in with them when I rode with them I didn't want to stick out like a sore thumb but when I went to that dealership and I sat down on that bike and they gave me a, offered me a test road test road test ride I test rode it they offered me a test ride and uh, after that first ride I was I was hooked I was sold I just there's something unique about the Harley Davidson experience while riding the bike now granted I don't have very many motorcycles to compare it to and maybe that opinion or position will change down the road when I get 10,000 more miles under my belt but for now this bike suits the aesthetic I'm looking for it suits my needs it's fun to wrench on. It's easy to work on and modify. It has a huge aftermarket support and fits the availability of local dealer or mechanic support because every motorcycle mechanic around here can, can work on a Harley. I don't think every one of them can work equally well on Japanese bikes. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe that's a, an assumption on my part. But considering looking at the ecosphere or motosphere, what do you want to call it, of motorcycle riders in this area, Harley is predominant. Honda is a close second. I think one point I, I didn't mention also is this is at the tail end of the pandemic. Inventory at most places was not very good. It's getting harder to find certain bikes in certain dealerships. New bikes are almost non-existent. I mean, this isn't a new bike, but it was a 2018 model with 2,500 miles, so it's practically brand new, barely broken in. If you can find a new bike of any particular model, good luck. The used market's booming, and the used market prices are going up because of it. Supply is low, demand is high. But it seems like every dealership I go to is crawling with Sportsters. So I got a pretty good deal on this bike. But anyways, I thank you for sticking with me through my ramblings of an Orthodox Deacon on the back of a Harley Sportster. Talking about why I got a Sportster over any other bike available to me or sitting in front of me at the time. Up here soon, I've got some gear reviews from Viking Bags and I'll talk about those here soon hopefully. Viking Bags is kind enough to send me two bags to review and I'm kind of honored they even offered me. I'm a nobody on Instagram and certainly a nobody on YouTube. 
So I hope to do their bags justice as I learn and grow in my video skills. And if y'all like what you hear, like what you see, or just want to see some more of my randomness and insanity here on YouTube, please give me a like, follow, and subscribe. Hit, make sure you hit the bell icon so you, you get notified when I post new videos and shorts. Any gear reviews or God forbid I get a new travel vlog here in the near future. But I hope you guys have a nice day. Ride safe. Keep the two wheels on the road. And I'll talk to you later. Man, did I take the tea kettle off the stove?